Hello, this is Peter Kaminsky, um, working on visual mapping via uh, tools that let me do nodes and lines, connections and elements, something like that. Uh, I wanted to try a couple different tools and see which ones I like, which ones I don't like, why I like them, uh, what features and capabilities I'm looking for in a tool. The kind of uh, mapping I want to do right now is uh, quick brainstorming and mapping of uh, knowledge space without too much uh, thinking beforehand. So this is uh, extemporaneous mapping, uh, not unlike um, uh, taking notes in a meeting or just uh, thinking through a topic and uh, starting a, a report or um, some commentary or something like that. So, first up, let's try a scalpel. I'm going to pick a new document and I'll give it a name. Naming things right away is important. Okay, one of the things I like already is it's got quick uh, instructions here, double click anywhere to create a note and drag notes onto one another to make connections. So that's kind of good enough to get started. It's a good reminder as I'm switching tools uh, what to do. Uh, I've got a preset list of kind of a brainstorming list um, about cars, uh, automobiles. Uh, I came up with this list kind of quickly and I try to do different kinds of things with it uh, to simulate maybe um, kind of arbitrary exploration through a space without thinking of all the same kinds of things and uh, this hope I hope this makes a good map and the idea I've got is to continue using this map for each tool. So let me get started. Um, Um, I realized right away something that I want is a couple different kinds of start points. Uh, so let me add some nodes here. Uh, because I want to, one of the things that uh, I want to make sure that as I'm doing maps I can have uh, not just one mind, mind map that's hierarchical with a center point, but I want a center point that that can be multiple center points. So let me uh, take some quick notes. I can see that I've got, uh, or I'll just add some nodes. I know that uh, I'm not great with Scalpel, but it's it's my main note taking tool for a number of years, and so I'm okay with it. Um, I don't have a lot of patience to learn every fiddly thing of most tools. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, interesting capabilities, uh, decent capabilities that, that Scalpel has for taking notes and making a map prettier. Right now I'm not really interested in a pretty map. What I'm really interested in is capturing concepts quickly and easily. So one of the things I know that uh, Scalpel does well is it lets me uh, hit command return and that gives me uh, a set of notes all, um, all in, at once. So horse, cat, house, city, car. You'll notice that um, that on city there I hit return instead of option return, command return, sorry. Uh, so you know I've got a little, it's a little clunky having to hit uh, command return. And then wondering if it, is it option, command, control, whatever. But once you get into it, it's it's pretty good. So these are great uh, items. Uh, one of the things, that, another thing you'll note, when I try to drag a, uh, a node, sometimes it makes the node bigger instead of um, moving the node. So this will screw up my alignment later on. So I'm going to hit uh, undo, a command Z, to, to get rid of that. Um, I think this happens mostly with with small notes. So 
Uh, it's not a big problem. Uh, anyway, as I move these, you'll notice that this is arranged in a stack. Um, it's called in Scapel. Um, Scapel has the idea of um, a couple notes all together uh, being a group of things like a bullet list or something like that, and that's called a stack. Uh, because I was using option return, um, it, it automatically made a stack, but I can also take a selection of notes and do a stack here. Um, uh, okay, let me scatter these around. Uh, horse and house look similar, so I'm going to put those together. Um, cats go in houses, I guess, guess, so I'll leave that over there. Houses go in cities. That sounds good, but really I wanted, wanted to start with car, so let me start with car. Uh, cars have wheels, um, they have engines or motors, um, wheels, uh, wheels are combined of the actual wheel part and then maybe tires. Uh, so the gesture for connecting things in Scapel is just to drag one on top of the other. Uh, Scapel keeps track of the direction that you connect something, so one is primary or, and secondary. Uh, so um, let me look up how to change this connection type to an arrow. Uh, so it looks like the um, I think I selected wheel and then wheels, and so um, the first one you select is maybe the child. Let me try that real quick. Uh, if I make a parent and a child. Uh, another thing that is really important to be able to do on these is to duplicate them. Um, and offhand, I don't know if you can do that. Uh, looks, I don't see a way to do a good duplicate. Um, but I can do a copy and paste, so let me do that. And I could paste a couple times if I need to. Uh, copy, paste, paste. Okay. Another thing I really like in Scalpel is the way it, it can do alignments. So I can align vertically and horizontally, and I can align edges um, or centers. Uh, so uh, in this case, I want to maybe align vertical centers, uh, horizontal centers, sorry. Um, and then I moving moving one of those means I move both of them. Uh, these are reasonably well aligned. These are not. So I'll align centers for those two. Um, and then I'm going to align vertical centers on these. Uh, another thing that uh, Scalpel is really good at is distribute horizontally. So now there's an, an even number of space, er, even space between those. Anyway, um, let's try an experiment here. Uh, connect parent or child to parent and parent to child. Um, and then do that thing where I did connect with arrow and connect with arrow. Uh, so the dashed line connection didn't matter. I think what it uh, the the arrow is probably going to go in the in the direction of selection. So first selected, second selected. There you go. Um, uh, I'm going to disconnect this and reconnect it with just our standard dashed line, which is super fast. Okay, wheels have wheels and tires. These things are getting a little bit close to, for me. You notice that stack moved all together, which is fine. Um, but let me try to move them a little bit separately. Uh, so engines have engine blocks.
and cylinders and spark plugs. I'm reading these off, but that's about the same as thinking, uh, just thinking. Uh, I made a mistake there. The cylinders didn't hit the target quite. So I'm going to do uh, Command Z and then redo that. And that time it connected just fine. Okay, so um, spark plugs. Let's think about spark plugs for a little bit. Um, spark plugs are a thing that use uh, electricity to ignite vapor. Um, vapor is a state of matter, so let me write down states of matter here. So if I if I end up labeling this connection, it would be something like remind me of <laughs> or uh, have a relationship. Um, so vapor is, well, let's look up vapor. I cheated and looked this up before. So let's copy a long note in. I need to make some more space. I uh, don't want that bullet. Uh, states of matter, vapor refers to a gas phase, liquid solid. So states of matter include um, solid, liquid, gas. And then I can say vapor is a gas phase. So this isn't the connection I want. This is the connection I want. Except maybe I really want to say there's vapor, uh, which is a phase of gas. And then really I want to connect this. Let's see if we connect it here and then disconnect it here. That's great. Okay, so now this is making a mess of my space here. Maybe I'll just tolerate that for a while. Uh, so use electricity to ignite vapor. I kind of forgot where that goes, but it's pretty easy for me to find. Oh yeah, it goes with spark plugs. <clears throat> now I can see that maybe I would decompose this statement a little bit uh, like a concept map. So let me try that real quick. Um, so the components, the nouns in here are electricity and vapor. Uh, so let me cut this, paste it here, cut this, um, and we're going to try a new thing. We're going to label this connection here. Uh, connection labeling in Scapel means uh, it, it works by selecting two notes and then editing the connection label. And I can just paste use in there from my previous uh, previous uh, wording here. And vapor is now redundant because I have that already. Uh, let me change this into a nice verb. Uh, and then delete this. Hopefully that node isn't sticking around. That's good. So let me connect these and label these two. Lovely. Um, okay, so back up the chain to engines. Anything else about engines? No. Nope. How about motors? Motors have batteries, or motors are connected to batteries. Um, batteries supply energy to motors. 
let's say that. Uh, I don't want to say supplies energy too because that's kind of too long so I'm just going to say energizes which hopefully is good enough. Cars have, let me start connecting these, uh, cars have wheels, an engine, or a motor. Um, I wish I could say it were one or the other here. That's not going to be super easy uh, in my map, so I guess I'll just leave it for now. Uh, cars have transmissions. Let's do something a little bit differently. Um, I can say from car, I can say uh, new connected note uh, transmission. And let's see how that, that worked. Worked okay. Um, just as easy to do this, I think, double click and create a new one. Cars have drivers. Drivers use steering wheels. I want to make sure I remember that drivers use steering wheels. So let's do this real quick. Maybe it should be singular, huh? Okay, along with the driver, there's passengers. Uh, a car is a kind of a vehicle. So this is a super set to car. Um, none of these are vehicles, but another kind of vehicle could be a truck, or a boat, or a ship, or a bicycle. Uh, ships and boats have a relationship. Um, I'm going to call this maybe uh, float on water. Truck and boat and ship and bicycle are all vehicles along with car. Uh, one thing to note here is this, n this only moves that node, which is fine. Uh, the lines all radiate towards the center, which is fine for my purposes here. Um, I know that I can multi-select these and move them all together. Uh, that doesn't move children, which I, is fine. Uh, I don't know, I wonder if I can select children. I don't think I can, but... Ah, there you go. Select connected nodes. Awesome. I can do command click to deselect that one. Uh, and then I wonder if I can do that, double down on that. Select connected nodes. Yep. Let's try that again. Uh, select car. What does uh, connected clusters do? Ah, it changed, chases them all out. <laughs> Uh, but it didn't select these, so that's a fair thing. Uh, now I can move all those together. That was pretty handy. It's pretty easy to... Yeah. Let's try that again. Select connected clusters. So everything connected to car or connected to something that's connected. Um, if I hold... Uh, last time I, what I did is I clicked and right away everything deselected, but if I hold command, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, well. Okay. I can also select these by space. I guess I can't deselect that way. Um, let's go back to my cars. Also have a uh, body. And headlights and tail lights.
keep track of the connection between these. Even though type of light and float on water is a different kind of connection. Cars have paint. Do cars have paint or does the body have paint? Uh, let's say that the body has paint. Cars are also known as automobile. And I'm going to connect that and label this connection as AKA. Automobile is okay. I'm going to look. I I kind of looked these up before, so I'm going to copy and paste those. copying a little bit more than I want here. Uh, I guess that's okay. It's not the most horrible thing. Let me try to be a little bit more parsimonious with my selection here. I think it's not going to work. And it didn't. Which is still more or less okay. Um, right away I'm kind of drawn, I, I could decompose each of these a little bit. Um, uh, this is obviously Greek and this is obviously French and Latin, so those would be good things to break out. Um, these are words, or parts of words, so I might, I might note that too. Um, but, yeah, so far, I, I'll, I, I'm good enough there. Okay. Um, I really don't like that these are not connected to anything. Um, I do, however, like that they are separate mind maps. They're not a mind map with a center. So uh, let's do some connecting of these. Um, and I'll say cat is and horse is a kind of animal and houses are in cities. Uh, connection label in. Okay, so this is a fairly decent map. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, uh, I like that I can distribute these around, make this make these look pretty the way I want to. This is um, so I've got good control over um, distribution, things like that. Uh, we saw before that if I wanted to I could, these are already aligned, but I could align them differently if I wanted. Um, and I could distribute them if I wanted. Horizontal wasn't what I was looking for there. These should be distributed vertically. Very nice. Maybe aligned on centers. Um, let me make some. Let me make some boxes, maybe. Uh, so I know that's a shape, new background shape, nice box, that's great. Let me move this here, make it smaller, so I can drag things inside, that's cool. Um, and then they're not a shape, <laughs> although it said something, the shape said a new shape. Yeah, I lost my my tip. Drag notes inside. And then a 
there was something about option click together. Let's try that. Yep, that worked. Um, so this is a good way to make a call out. I wonder if this, if I can make a new shape around those. Nope. But it's easy enough to make a shape and then select these. I do the option click thing, but that's okay. Uh, I also use these background shapes to make little notes or legends. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to do is just type, I guess. Um, These were text boxes, but I guess they're just shapes, which is fine. Uh, cards diagramming, option return again by Peter Kinski, version 2021 07101101. I can use alignment to make these better. Although I guess maybe I have to do this to fix them a little bit. So let me do alignments, distribute vertically, align left edges. Looks pretty good. Whoops. We haven't looked at it too much yet, but there's a whole whole thing about styling notes that we can do. Uh, let's play with styling a little bit. Option click to select all of those, put it down here. <coughs> uh, so the thing that's really cool is I can choose different different types of uh, notes from a palette, kind of. Uh, I can also uh, change the border and the border shape. Make these a lot, a lot different. And I can easily get back to this, just make it look normal for me. Um, I can do that for a number of um, notes at once, too. So perhaps I would want to do something like uh, select connected, uh, and then apply order change to each of these and maybe make the font bigger. Uh, font looks like it's not in here. So I also know that I can do inspector uh, with option command I. So let me make the font bigger on all of these and then select car and make the font even bigger on that one. I can also do things uh, command minus and command plus works too. Uh, I, 
don't like that the border is the same on all of these, so let me do that connected trick again real quick. Edit, select, connected. Border thin and border big. You'll note that I can do this either in the inspector or with the menu. Uh, I can do things like uh, I, I can save these note styles also. Let me pick a change this around to something maybe kind of ugly but different. Um, border cloud shape here is pretty ugly, but I guess it's different at least. Uh, another thing is I can't change the size of the note. I can't make it bigger vertically. Uh, I can make it bigger horizontally, or I can put more text in here, which is okay. And change the alignment but only the horizontal alignment, not the vertical alignment. So the way I've got it vertically aligned right now is just with blank lines. Uh, so now I can save this as a note style. Not quite in here. Let me try it up here. new note style from selection. That's what I want. Uh, ugly style. You have a full set of what you want to include as the template style there. So now I've got a new style called ugly. And let me pick some poor node and make it this ugly style. Apply a note style, ugly style. Lovely. I will undo that and get it back. Okay, that's a pretty good tour of Scalpel's features and uh, creating a couple different diagrams uh, and some ways that I can add some structure and maybe not flare, it's not super attractive, but differences at least uh, in the way that this this works. And I, I felt like that was fast and determin determinative. I was able to do the things that I wanted to do uh, and it was deterministic, easy to undo. Uh, I don't have multiple undo steps but um, I didn't get too far deep into problems so I'm okay with that. Uh, I know that I can export this as a PNG or a PDF. Uh, I can also export it as uh, text or RTF or OPML. I don't think that it preserves the structure in those formats. Um, so not great export exporting the data as data, um, but uh, at least I could export nodes and text or OPML, and then suck that into something else and, and structure it there. So there you go, that's Scalpel. Okay, let's continue our diagramming experiment. Uh, now we're going to use diagrams.net, formerly known as draw.io. I'm going to run the web browser version of this, even though I have the desktop app, they're very similar. One of the things to note is that uh, you've got a, a variety of uh, storage options. Uh, I think I'm going to just store to my device, but I'll decide later, I guess. And let's make sure to name our diagram.
most amazing things, most amazing and cool things about uh, diagrams.net. Many cool things uh, it has, but uh, it's able to store an image file that has the embedded XML file that recreates the drawing document. Uh, so I really like to choose um, editable bitmap image because then you can distribute it to PNG, but uh, anybody can load it with diagrams.net and work on their copy of it. It's amazing. So let's do that. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, Diagrams.net is a full-featured diagram editor, so we can make all kinds of uh, uh, Visio-like diagrams uh, or OmniGraffle-like diagrams. Um, we're just going to use uh, lines and boxes. So we have a bit of a, um, a bit of a decision to make whether we want to use uh, text objects or box objects. So let's play around a little bit with those and see it, what the difference is. Oh. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I think that'll be make this easier to work on. Uh, so what you saw there was me uh, getting mixed up between um, sizing um, affordances and line uh, drawing affordances. Uh, it's something that you fight with a little bit on diagrams.net. Um, it's it's a good thing. It's got a lot of capabilities, and but then the 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 subsequent thing is that you have to work a little bit sometimes um, around the complexity. So here we've got a text box, no border. Um, I'm going to pick a rounded rectangle because it's prettier. So each of these shapes, or many of these shapes anyway, can have a, a text um, component in the middle. Uh, I think one thing I really like about diagrams.net is it's got a simple copy, so that was option D for duplicate rather than copy and paste. Uh, you'll see the OmniGraffle-like <coughs> guidelines popping up when I get close to the centers of something or maybe the edges of something. A guideline will pop up that I'm close to it. Uh, you'll also see that these things are aligned on the grid <coughs> by default. That's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, let's see about connecting these now. So I think one way to connect them, uh, it looks like the X's are connection points as opposed to the um, circles which are uh, sizing points. So if I take this connection point and connect it here to one of these connection points, I'm good to go. So that's a nice line. Um, I've got a kind of a circuit diagramming line uh, by default, so I know that I can change that by selecting that as an object and choosing mm, no, nope, not that one. I guess it's this one here. are more about arrows, I think. Although, there's some cool line types there, gotta say. I don't know what happened to my... Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, I turned off the, the line part of it. That makes sense. Let me choose arrow again. Maybe it's this type. Yeah, there you go. These are the different types of lines that I might have um, in... Uh, scalpel, we were using straight lines. Uh, curvy lines might be fun. Mm, we can keep kind of playing around with that. Let's see how that continues to feel to us. 
Uh, same thing here, it's got connection points and I can connect two things and then move them around and they'll look good. So I think if I needed to, I could put, I could turn on the line for these and they would turn into boxes of it, essentially. Probably the same thing here, I could turn these off. Um, this one is transparent by default, this one is filled by default, although I can turn that off. I think there's a way to change one shape to another shape, maybe two. Uh, so maybe that we could actually just change one to the other. Uh, let's stick with text boxes, text boxes for now. Uh, so I'll delete these, and maybe even these two. think so double click brings up that um, object selector text is right at the left there so that's convenient um, another way to uh, if you select a shape over here it just instantiates a shape on the on the diagram or You can also drag a shape onto the diagram. So a couple different ways to instantiate objects. Let's use double click for now, I think. Offhand, I don't know how to use just the keyboard to make a new shape. So if I'm typing and hit command return, nothing happens. Uh, a thing I do like is uh, you can create a shape that's connected by clicking these make another shape that's connected arrows. That's pretty cool. By the way, this is um, a rotate thing, which I guess might be useful. So let's make our sh the shapes from our list. Um, We've got horse, cat, house, cities, and cars. I miss a little bit. Uh, scalpel was really nice being able to hit command uh, return to get new objects super quickly in text. But this is not too much slower. So cars have wheels. Uh, wheels have the steel part of the wheel. Oops. Undo works really well in draw IO diagrams now. I'm going to do another way I've, I create a uh, node sometimes by duplicating one because duplicate is, is a single command key, uh, command D. And tire. Cars also have uh, engines or motors. Let's start making some lines here so we don't get too lost. I'll connect these to these. And to do that, I guess I've got to maybe select the line type or a line. Um, let's stick with curvy line. This is a little bit different than the other curvy line. This has got two curves by default, I think, two breakpoints, um, which is fine. So drag this one here. And drag it to the center actually. Uh, drag 
this here. Okay, well that's kind of useful, but kind of a pain too. Uh, I need to drag these control points around to get it to do the right thing, so let me not do that. And maybe what I wanted instead was a directional connector. Yep. So a couple ways to get this. I, the way I usually do it is actually drag it on. And then I'm looking for the connection points here, and they're not popping up for me. I think that's connected to the center. And I'll connect this one to the center. Uh, the different highlights are showing me what the connection point is. So that's connected to the center, that's great. Um, so in contrast to scalpel, it's a little bit more complicated to get the connections going. The good news about that is that I've got more flexibility. The bad news is I've got to fight the interface a little bit to um, to get what I want. So I did a command D to duplicate the line shape. So this one is backwards. That seems bad. Let me delete that. Or reverse it. I'll just reverse it. Okay, cards have wheels. have engines. I'm doing command D to duplicate there. Uh, this is a place where I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I guess I created a line by dragging from the connection point maybe. Let's try that again. Duplicate this, drop it on the object, drop this on the object. So, no, I'm doing okay. Let's compare real quick how this looks against scalpel. Wheels, engine, motor. Uh, if I wanted to, I've got a lot of control over the way this line looks. So it can either have air hoods on front and back different kinds of arrowheads. Um, I'll put this back that way. Uh, different kinds of lines, dashes, and things like that. Maybe I will kill this, this arrowhead, just so we can see a different kind. Um, I wonder also if I can turn uh, what I can do about this grid. I can turn it on and off. Uh, I wonder mm. let me try alignment too. I think the way you do alignment is arrange and So I can do uh, the various alignments here, which makes me happy. There are pictures instead of words, which makes it a little bit easier to, a little bit harder to, to scan and read quickly, a little bit easier to understand the difference between horizontal and vertical centering and, and edges. Uh, it's also got distribute, which I like. And let me keep going on some nodes. Okay, transmission. I'm going to duplicate this. I guess one of the reasons I duplicate these instead of um, instantiating new ones is because uh, I, I know that these are the right objects. So there's lots of different kinds of objects I might have here. And in a more complicated diagram, um, it's, it's good to kind of 
keep duplicating the ones that you've got rather than instantiating potentially new kinds. Uh, in a simple diagram like we're doing now, it doesn't matter too much. Pretty sure there's a way to make a line straight from this guy to that guy, but I don't see it offhand. So we'll keep doing this. There's a difference between the green highlight and the blue highlight. I think the, the green means it's going to a connection point. And I don't know why the connection points aren't showing up. So um, I'm OK with just connecting to the object for this diagram anyway. I'll go back to the double click thing. I guess these arrows are so um, clicked to connect and clone. <laughs> Drag to connect. Okay, so that's what that does. Nice. Except now that I've got two waypoints in there. I wonder if that's because I have a default of um, these. Uh, let me do that again. So it's what it's doing is being sticky about the line type, which is kind of nice. Uh, I kind of wish this arrow had a clone without connection. I didn't see that. So let's make this manual. Let's kill this connection. Uh, if I drag that, yay. One thing I do like, let me see if I can find this again. Um, I'm pretty sure you can select a bunch of the same kinds of objects at once. And offhand, maybe I guess I don't see how to do that. But it's a pretty, pretty cool capability. these lines or I guess maybe let me pick these lines and turn them to dashes the way that uh, we've got in scalpel just to make the make it look the same not because dashes are necessarily better um, so I'll go here select dashes turn off the arrows And then I think it will keep going with that line style. Let's see. Cars have drivers and passengers. Driver uses the steering wheel. A car is a kind of vehicle.
I have to say double clicking to get a, an object. Uh, this selector is really nice if I had to do lots of different kinds of objects and it's really frustrating to have this extra click whenever <laughs> I need a uh, um, just another text box. Uh, okay, so what I did there was clone, so this is, I'm going to change this to be a truck, because I, I wanted a truck anyway. And then I want to connect this. Um, I think I can maybe hold down, um, holding down option gets me constrained movement. trying shift and control to see if there's a way to have free motion. Yeah, this is option. That lets me move not on the grid. That's kind of cool. Of course, I could just turn the grid off, too. Okay, so um, trucks are vehicles, cars are vehicles, and so are trying to clone, which I was doing by accident. Click to connect and clone. Right. Okay. So that was a control click. I thought it was doing it without the control before. Okay, this could be a boat. Or a ship. The grid is finally starting to frustrate me a little bit because mostly because it makes it a little bit harder to see things and there's lots of things popping up. So I'm going to turn the grid off. Um, there's a difference, or there's a connection between ships and boats, and I forget exactly how I d designed that over there, so I'll do it. Take a, a peek over there. Let me move these out of the way. I think the select rule. Wow, something weird happened here. I've got an extra node maybe here. Maybe that's a bug. Maybe maybe it's not. Uh, the select rule, I think, on uh, diagrams.net is if you don't have the whole object selected, it doesn't get selected. So I'm selecting just the line there. And you have to select the whole object to get them selected. So this will select wheels and tires. Um, scaffolds the other way around. Uh, if your selection touches it, anything, it, it'll get selected. They both work. Um, you just have to kind of get used to, to which one. And in, in both of them, you can option click something to select it or deselect it. Uh, in diagrams.net, these connections are separate objects. Um, in Scalpel, they're they're not really, uh, which is good and bad. There's good things about it and bad things about it. So I was what I was going for here was floats on water. Uh, which applies to both boats and ships. Awesome. Another thing you note here, kind of, I'm a little bit constrained by these side panels, and I could turn them off, I guess. Um, 
at least some of them. Uh, another thing is that diagrams.net has a page conceit, so um, I'm using uh, it's it's flexible about how many pages there are. So uh, if I put all of these things, whoops, um, if I put all of these things across the page boundary, it'll just make a new page for me, which is great. But um, but it's got this hard page size that you have to kind of work with. Um, it's it's okay to create, um, you can create custom page sizes. Um, it's not a problem. I think, yeah, custom. So I've done that before, but it's a little a little clunky sometimes to deal with pages. Even though I guess you can make sure that you can print well then. But for this kind of diagram, uh, it usually works. I, I haven't had a problem getting stuff printed with scalpel and I just don't worry about page size so that's better in a way. Um, I, I do feel constrained by the page here though so I, I guess I want to at least change this to landscape. Sometimes I've sometimes what I'll do is I'll just make a really large you know, uh, 100 inches each way page and then work without the constriction. Um, another thing I guess I do sometimes is uh, move this to the center of the page so I'm not squeezed over in one corner. Uh, let me try that real quick. Diagrams.net has good grouping and ungrouping, so I'm grabbing all of that and then moving it as a selection. I could group all these things, but then that makes other weird problems. But if I'm making more complicated, you know, diagram that's not just a map, um, the, the grouping is really useful. You can group um, shapes together to make a super shape. You know, super useful. Okay, so I was at floats on water. And I've got, I still need bicycle in my vehicles. Uh, cars have bodies. So I put body and taillight and headlight above passengers here. I guess I, I did all that with, I kind of fixed my space problem here. Let me move these out of the way a little bit more. So cars have a body. I remember that bodies have paint. And cars have have uh, headlights I really miss the option return to make a new node here and what I'm doing here when I make just the line is uh, drag without control uh, the control key held down Headlights and taillights are a type of light. Oops. Um, body and car are connected, body and paint are connected. Cars are also known as automobiles. Let me move 
move some of this stuff out of the way. line didn't quite get connected to bicycle properly. Okay, cars are also known as automobiles. Automobile is an, a word that's interesting this way. Okay, this is even kind of more messier than Scalpel was with pasting in the extra junk there, the, the bullets. Um, let me do shift. Um, and it also copied over the size which was different so I did uh, shift command V there and that came out better compare our scalpel and our diagrams.net picture. For these boxes, I think probably what I'll do is use these. Here I'm able to use multiple lines. I guess I could have used multiple lines in these. I made ended up making separate ones. Um, and let's make sure I can change the size of particular lines of text. Oops, wrong, wrong thing. That was zoom, not font size. Let me turn this back on. And. How that text got over. Let me spell my name right here. Okay, so if I select all this text, left justify it, select just this line, make it bigger, select just this line, make it a little bit bigger. Pretty good. Uh, left justify crowds the edge too much here. So there might be a way to um, fix the padding there, but yeah, here's the spacing. It's probably this. I don't know why.
why they would have zero on the left, but I'm okay with that, the way it turned out. Uh, we'll leave city and house together and move horse and cat down here to an animal box. We'll make new animal node. And it looks like I I lost some nodes or I didn't didn't do some nodes. Let me do those real quick. I changed a little bit. The the node here was or that the connections here were not quite right the way I left it after after we did scalpel so I fixed that um, not on the video and let's also maybe try line labeling real quick I think the way that works maybe I just select the line and then type yep. So these have the label in a gray font along the line. This has regular font on the line. Um, and it's kind of a separate object, kind of not. I like the scalpel look better, but I could probably change this. with some formatting. Okay, so an engine. Yeah, it's an engine block. And then my fonts, font color is sticky. So let me clear that again. Uh, engine has cylinders. concentrate on my nodes instead of my font color. So I guess I need to fix this font color and then somehow it didn't stick. Okay, maybe now it's stuck. Spark plugs. Um, I had deconstructed um, electricity and ignites and vapor and stuff uh, into these nodes. So I won't go through that process. I'll just copy what I've got in um, Dagon's, or sorry, in Scapel. So I need electricity. Let's 
Bowen. And liquid. Somehow I lost this line. Okay, spark plugs use electricity. clunky here to have these not be defaulted to great but and then I've got to be careful to make sure that things after that are going to have the right uh, color but so let's put a box around this one this is in front so I can just send to back and then it moves independently of those, but I could grab all of these and group them. So now it's one unit. And uh, houses are in cities, so let's do that. Yeah, the color's right, except that that means if I created a node, the color would be wrong. And let's make a box around that, too. Send it back. And this one, one other thing here. Let me copy that from here. sure what's happening. I guess maybe this is the wrong size or something. Kind of disappears and reappears. Let me try again. Make sure I've got a text box. Paste into it. Okay, that's kind of better. Kind of not. <laughs> I think maybe it's better if I do a text box. I'm not sure that I've ever used a text box before, but it seems safer. This must be a rich text box, so I don't want this like that. Yeah, much better. Okay, so let me make this a little smaller. Uh, one of the problems is I didn't do shift-paste. So let me try that. It's a little better. Um, this is really concerning that the text is outside of the box. Um, I think that's... oh, here it is here, the spacing. That might have to do with the fact that there used to be a heading in here or something, I don't know. But whatever. So I'll connect this to this. Finally I'm seeing the uh, connection spots again. I don't know why I haven't been. Um, let's practice that real quick. Let me pull it away from the object and connect it to there. So that's nice. 
Okay, so here is more or less uh, our diagram. Let me make sure to save it. Hit a little PNG. Um, and download. Good enough, I'll save it there. And now, as I was uh, explaining before, I could take that PNG, give it to somebody else, they can look at it as a PNG, or they can load it in diagrams.net and edit it, uh, just the way I've got it here. Super cool capability. So, in sum, um, I'm able to do diagramming pretty much just as well in diagrams.net. I stumble over the extra affordances a little bit. Um, if I had to do any more complicated kind of diagramming with different uh, different shapes and things like that, uh, diagrams.net would be superb. As it was, it kind of um, it, it slows me down a little bit. It's it's a, just a little bit clunkier than doing it in scalpel. Um, have to have to note that neither of these diagrams is very cleaned up. Um, uh, I guess I didn't do the boxes here. Let me do that real quick. I don't think that uh, diagrams.net has a... Yeah, maybe it does. Uh, select... Mm. I think that's just nodes and lines. Um, so I don't think it has a select connected. So let me kind of get the sense of... Um, I'm just going to select these with command select. That didn't do what I wanted, did it? Somehow I hit uh, the clone instead of select. Try to be a little bit more careful, not not clicking the arrows. Okay, so I can just put a line around these and make it rounded. Yeah. Uh, put a line around car. That was uh, Shift Command Z, uh, which activates one of my other uh, browser plugins. So let me clear that. Um, so I won't do Shift Command Z because somebody else owns that. And have make this have a line. Give it a d darker line that's rounded. Um, make the text bigger, a lot bigger. And then select these again. Pretty sure there's a way to select all the same kinds of objects. But I'm not going to look it up right now. these just a little bit bigger text. And somehow the roundedness fell off, so I think I'm going to round these again. Even though I select the arrow every time there, it looks like. I could do myself a favor by zooming in a little bit. Um, okay, so I guess I'm not going to round it. 
Um, neither of these diagrams is cleaned up very well to make them pretty. Um, they're just, did I get the nodes in? Does it look kind of right? Um, I really like these labels on scaffold a lot better than these labels. But these will do. Uh, let's look at this PNG and see how it looks. So I would need to do some work here to figure out why the, the background isn't coming out right. Uh, there's something else that goes on here. Um, the, the text is pretty fuzzy and now I remember that one of, one of the tricks I, I have when I export to PNG is uh, I'll zoom to 200% and that works better. So I probably need a transparent background. This is how it saves um, an X, the XML source code for the, the diagram. Let me go ahead and try this real quick. Um, don't need the page, just need the diagram. I want a transparent background. Include a copy of my diagram. Um, might as well put some border around it. So the text is better. I still haven't figured out the background. I'm not going to worry about it right now, but I would need to if um, if I were publishing this. And uh, so I exported it, so I know that this isn't quite true. So I'm going to close this and maybe I can try loading that PNG just, just to see that that works. Yeah, it remembers that it's, it, it didn't, um, it didn't lose that. It's got it in the browser memory somehow. I'm not going to play around with it close enough. So that's uh, diagrams.net. Okay, next up on the diagramming pub crawl is Miro. With Miro and maybe the next app, Whimsical, I'm not sure that I'll do the whole diagram, um, just enough to kind of get a flavor of it. So let's try a new board in Miro. Making a diagram like this in Miro is a little bit of a misuse of the tool, I think. Uh, it's got a lot of capabilities other than just uh, box and line diagrams. So I don't know if this is exactly fair, but it's worth a shot. Uh, okay, I don't really want a template, so maybe I will just close this. And let's make sure that I can make text. I'm not sure that I can. <laughs> ah, it's just slow. Okay, maybe my computer is crowded, maybe my browser is running too slow. I don't have a lot running on my computer. Um, the CPU is kind of pegged though. 
So for whatever reason, Miro is running slow for me. Um, too slow to be useful, I think, but let's try this a little bit more. if I want a straight line or an arrow. I guess an arrow is fine. Just drag a connection line. That's cool. So you're telling me if I make a new text box here, didn't really mean to make a, a line here. Actually, let me, I'll hit escape and the line will go away. Uh, let me do this from here. Drag from here to there. It's pretty sweet. Okay. Try a straight line for the heck of it. Dragged it off the text box somehow. One of the problems I have with Miro is uh, its connection algorithm for straight lines. It's it's doing something that's kind of reasonable for text. It's choosing the nearest connection point on the outside of the text box. Um, but in my experience, what happens then is that uh, when you have a, a constellation of, of nodes around another node, Uh, that was option D, which was nice. Let me let me start the real test here. I'll delete these and start with car. trying different uh, command keys with uh, enter to see if I can make a new one. Um, I'm going to use option D to make new ones. So cars have wheels. Okay, that's cool. Not what I wanted. I wanted to make it the box bigger. But not the phone. Oh, actually, that's that's another Miro uh, um, feature. Text fills the box, kind of. So theoretically, if I wanted to make this bigger, I would just make it the box bigger. That has a weird interaction with the length of the text, but I'm not going to think about that too much yet. So duplicate this. Uh, I've actually got to type in there, or select in there to start typing, which is a little clunky, but not horrible. 
cars have wheels and engines, or instead of an engine, they might have a motor. Uh, option D without the right thing selected so I got a bookmark instead of um, the command to mural same thing I think I have to select out of this select it again then command D, yeah. Uh, so this is just slow enough for me to be frustrated doing this. It, it takes a long time to move things. It takes a little bit of extra time to, to make new things. Everything is a little bit slow and it, it gets me pretty frustrated. Uh, so let's connect these. Come on, Mira, you can do it. if I'm doing something wrong. Try uh, connecting these to the center here. I guess that's connected to the center. So um, this this line here is connected to the center is what the interface seems to be telling me. Um, so that's great and all except that it's not really connected to the center. So let me try to connect it to the center again. I think so I think it is. Um, I'm going to keep connecting these. Okay, so the good news here with this connection stuff is that I guess I can read the text. I don't know how this one ended up. Let me try to resize this. And then the, the font size changes, so I don't want that. I guess uh, it's the same box size as transmission or something like that. So let me undo, redo. Looks like I got a weird crash. Or 
or maybe it's just the introduction with my uh, my plugin on uh, command shift Z. Okay. So I'm trying to select car again. There we go, so that I can connect it to driver. I'm just waiting. Okay, maybe I'll give up waiting and try that again. Select car. So I'm, I'm connecting it to the center, not to that one. So center. So a couple problems here is somehow this box is too big and I don't know how to fix it. So that line connects to the center of the box, but not the center of the word. Um, these, these, this doesn't radiate from the center, even though it's connected to the center. So these arrows are starting to look weird. Let me see what happens when I move them around. So this this line doesn't connect to the center. So even though these are on opposite sides of car, they're not connected in the same place. The whole thing looks dumb. It's weird that this line jumps from there to there. So I guess this this is particularly awkward here. Um, I guess maybe I'm doing something wrong. Uh, maybe if I connected these boxes, or maybe if I size these boxes better, um, but I don't know how to size it without changing the, the font size. Um, so this, this connection, all of this stuff just looks super stupid, and I'm going to quit <laughs> because I don't see this going any place good. Um, done with Miro for this experiment. Thanks. Okay, last stop on our uh, diagramming tour. Uh, let's try Whimsical. I haven't worked too much with Whimsical, so I'll kind of fumble around probably, but uh, let's let's check it out. It looks good, and uh, it's taken me a little while to know that I think I want a flowchart more than I want a mind map, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's try flowchart. Okay, so boxes and lines and text. Let's try text. Click doesn't do anything. Um, the various uh, shift command uh, different return keys didn't do anything. That one makes a new line in the box. Uh, okay, so right click doesn't do anything interesting, so I guess it's this. Uh, this one is a little bit slow too. Not as bad as scalpel, but not great. So let's see how we connect these things. Okay, so the good news is I've got a line, it's easy to label, 
And I guess it's kind of easy to connect it. So that's pretty good news. Uh, I also know that you can move these to any part of... Well, maybe not any part. But you can move it to different sides, sides of the, the, the box. And that's not a good place to put it, but if I wanted to, I could move it to the center. And I think everything would be hunky-dory. Yeah. So unlike Miro, I think I'll be able to use uh, lines and have them look decent. Uh, that label is pretty interesting. There's a really bad spot for it when I move it like that. But maybe that's a little bit of a bug. It usually looks pretty good. Okay, so let's try some mapping. Um, cars. if I can duplicate this. Horse. If I just type it doesn't do anything, I've kind of got to put it down someplace. Cat. But then I don't have to select it to start typing, which is kind of nice. City. Looks like I had a hockey there somehow. Okay, so from previous work we know that uh, cats live in a house. Try that again. Uh, cat in uh, let's try something else. <laughs> Cars have wheels. I'm going to try this copy and paste again. And engines and motors. I'm unhappy with that icon, by the way, for duplicate. That's the copy icon to me, and so overusing it for duplicate doesn't make me happy. It makes me a little bit confused and, and a little bit upset. So let's try connecting car and engine. Aha! I wasn't dragging it to the next one previously. So I don't want to add text. But now I've calmed down enough so that I can add a connector between house and cats. Except that they're backwards. So I guess I want to toggle the endpoint. Um, That label is too much, the font size is too sim, and the color is too similar to the, the nodes. I guess.
guess I can fix that, but it's still clunky. So the piece parts are here. Um, it's a little bit clunky to to accomplish things. Um, the good thing is it feels pretty easy and I think I can explain to somebody on the phone um, or on Zoom how to do this and they could pick it up pretty quickly. Um, things like that spacing guide there kind of gets in the way more than it helps in a lot of ways. Um, I, if I were, I, I think I've seen enough. Um, I could use this um, and uh, it's a little bit simpler than draw IO to explain to somebody else and get them started so I can kind of imagine using this tool. Um, the the speed that I can do stuff is a little slow, more slow than I'd like. It makes it hard for me to to concentrate on, on what I'm doing rather than just fiddling around with it. Um, and I don't feel like that's going to get a lot faster. Um, it, it just it's a little slow and clunky to get stuff done. Uh, the drags are slow. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot going on here, but you know, to get this to work, but it's it it ends up making it kind of a slow slog and tough to brainstorm with. Um, both diagrams.net and Whimsical are multiplayer, so that would be really cool. It's, it would be cool to do this multiplayer with, with uh, people. Um, I'm not convinced that it would be faster or better than having one person drive Scalpel. Um, I think one person can drive Scalpel pretty quickly, um, and other people could be watching and kibitzing. And then once you have a map, you could take that map and re-implement it maybe in Whimsical, I don't know. I, I don't I don't relish the idea of trying to get all this work done in Whimsical. It would take, I feel like it would take a lot longer. Um, the diagrams are pretty, the font is pretty, the lines are pretty. Um, it, the labels are kind of clunky. Um, so, I don't know. For a multiplayer solution, I'm kind of torn between Draw.io and Diagrams.net and uh, Whimsical. Miro, with the, the line placement, just uh, totally turned me off. Um, that and being slow, uh, like Whimsical, um, not, it's not something I look forward to using. So, I guess Scalpel is kind of a winner, um, but it's only single player and uh, it would take a little bit of work to get this map out into to anything else. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Not happy, I guess. Uh, there you go. There's the tour.